Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros podcast. I'm your host, Derek Whita. Joining me, as always, he's wearing a fucking Dunder Mifflin hat today. Yes. Always. You love... It's because I get it's because I get attention when yeah, I wear. Yeah, I know. It. Like that's your peacocking. It is, man. Everybody loves the office, and when they see a shirt, they're like, "Oh, hey, I got that shirt." Yeah, and it just makes me smile. I know. I should have. I should have gotten office t-shirts instead of cutting my leg off <laughs> to get that kind of conversation starter. You right. know. Well, yeah. this was as close as I could get to the cut off leg. Yeah. Because no one cares about migraines. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No shit. Yeah. It's Owen, everybody. How's this it going? is Owen. Yeah. Um, dude, I um. Actually, you know, it's sad. I, I've been falling asleep to the office. Yeah. I always, I've, I've, I've fallen asleep to friends every night for like 12 years. That's fine. And I have all the DVDs, yeah. but I haven't needed them for years because they were, it was on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And um, so I don't, I don't have a DVD player. And so I, I fall asleep to friends because it's like my version of white noise. Right. You know, like I've fucking seen every episode at least 50 times. That's how the entourage so like, I'll just be laying, laying on my side and like I know what's coming next. And like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, but, um, Ross. I've, I've seen The Office <laughs> enough times to where it can be white noise. Yeah. You know, but it's not friends, man. I, I miss friends. I need yeah. I need to get a DVD player or I just I just got to buy it on the Apple. But the thing. So here's the thing. Like it's we have, you know, Apple TV and stuff here. Yep. But it's linked up to Stacy's account okay and so is she anti friends well no but she's like she's anti spending money oh and it's and it's 80 dollars. and like she for real texts me like when i rent a movie and don't tell her she's just be like explain this and then it's like five dollars <laughs> i'm like babe i'm fucking wanted to watch a movie you know <laughs> and and the the receipts come to her like two weeks after the fact right so it's like i'll tell her that i'm renting a movie but she'll have forgotten by the time she gets the invoice from Apple, right. you know, it's funny, man. Like we're, we're, had, chi- had we're, you like friends? Yeah, no shit. Was it good? Yeah. yeah, but I just gotta, I just gotta get it on digital. I have, um, you know, and I, I just, I just got a new TV too. And so, and I mounted it on the wall there, you know, and mm-hmm. that we got it in the bedroom. Um, I got, dude, I have like 10 books of DVDs. Yeah. Cause that was, I mean, and when I, so when I was in the army, I didn't have a TV. Right. But when I got shot, I was laid up so yep. much. Um, and I was on, and when I was like inpatient laid up and just like, I had, uh, you know, I was inpatient in the hospital for like six months. Right. But then for six months they, they sent me home, but I had to stay in a bed basically. And I had, I had to be in this machine called a CPM. What's that? It would fucking, so my, it would bend my knee. Oh. The machine would just, dude, it hurt. Cause it would like crank, 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 crank. All the way hold. down. Like, Yeah. And then it would, you know, relax. And I had to do that. Fuck. But that was, you know, because we couldn't get my knee to bend. So right. I started watching, like, shows. And I, um, um, I, you know, I started watching Friends. But back then, I really, like, that's when I watched Deadwood. Oh, Deadwood great show. Deadwood is fucking amazing. Fucking love it. And Rome. Yep. Love HBO did Rome. And sadly, that was only two seasons. I know. Like, that shit was cool as fuck, man. Yep. And um, who was your favorite character in Rome? Um, God, the... <laughs> I actually liked uh, Caesar's. I, was it his mistress who was banging the fucking slave dude? The like little, um, he was like short and hairy. Dude, what dude, on Rome? On Rome, it was uh, Lic- Licidius. I can't remember their fucking names. Uh, um, yeah. Anyway, it was the chi- it, Brutus's mom. Oh, okay, yeah. It was Brutus's mom. Oh, yeah. I thought she was fucking... Your like, favorite character was a woman? Dude, she was, like, behind the scenes. Uh, what about Titus throats. Polo? Titus like, Polo was yeah, dope, right? And, uh, yeah, I liked, I liked Mark Antony. And then, and then actually, you know, there's... um, I got stacks of books here in the room. Plutarch's Lives. Have you ever read that? He was, like, no. an old historian. Okay. Mm. And his bit about Mark Antony. Mark <laughs> Anthony. Mark Antony. Antony. Anthony. Antony. Antony. Whatever. Yeah. But so I got all these fucking DVD books and I'm like, man, it's time to go digital, you know, but it's yep. like, how do I, but like, I have, 
You got to burn those DVDs. I was going to throw all the DVDs away, but it's like, fuck, man, like like the Count of Monte Cristo. Am I actually going to buy that and have it on my library, on my TV or something? I just need to get a little DVD player or something. I have a like hard that, drive you know? that followed me to Afghanistan that just as we would land. See, I don't know how to put things on a hard drive. Oh, I just copy everyone's <laughs> yeah. hard drives. Stacy I mean, has like nine hard drives, and yeah. I don't fucking understand that stuff. And I was actually, I asked her the other day, I was like, hey, are memory sticks still a thing? Mm-hmm. Like if I needed to do a memory stick thing or something like that. You're adorable. Like, yeah, it's fucking, that's a, that's a nice word for pathetic, you know? Yeah. Oh, man. I feel good. I feel good in our new room. I know people, um, uh, uh, the, these, the, we do record video of do. these podcasts. I edit them. Yeah, Owen sits there and syncs up camera yep. and audio and camera all that one, stuff. Two. We started the podcast in the garage, and that was fun. The pot, like the, you know, we're, this is episode 13. Yeah. I think we've like transformed. That's actually 13 weeks. We've, we've come a long way since. We've done the same one. thing for 13 weeks. Yeah. Uh, well, is that more impressive for you or for me or both? Cause I think, like, <laughs> I think both. yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We, we like to bounce did, around. And, we do. And, yeah. We try lots of different stuff. We did, yeah. I think, like seven, six or seven cooking episodes. And then, and then and we I was like, hey, I'm, yeah, I'm good with that. Something different. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're on 13. Yeah, that's pretty good. And now, and we started in the garage, but we moved, but I lost, I needed my garage gym. I know. We moved into my art and music room and it was like crowded and weird what? and stuff. It's so open now. I got I this know. new... I uh, did. Uh, I got this new table off of Wayfair. I think yep. we talked about because you're addicted my to Wayfair. Yeah, dude. I, I I have nothing on order from Wayfair I right fully now. Support the addiction. and I feel weird. I feel weird. Like no, I have nothing coming to me. There's got, I have no hope on the horizon. There's, this next week's exciting yeah. at my house. What are you getting? I got a bunch of lights. Uh, oh. I got two different different kinds of lights. I got some mounting equipment and some stands for lights for the podcast room. Yeah, and so. Owen and I argue about lights. Yeah. Owen and I argue. I don't like these big, bulky light and things. So I think we're going to try to put it on the ceiling. But anyway, this is cool. It's fun. It's it feels awesome. better in here. I yep. feel I feel better. I like you it. You know? Yeah. And it'll be nice when we have guests because then it's not like yeah. one more body. I know. We were putting guests on the uh, the uh, uh, the porn couch, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like The casting yeah, couch. Yeah, the casting couch. The casting couch. Yeah. Nope, it'll be it'll be cool and fun. <laughs> I I'm very excited about it. Um, uh, today's show. What are we talking about? Well, we're gonna talk about quitting. Ooh, we're nice. talking about quitting. I'm gonna tell a couple stories of things I quit and stuff like that. But before we get into the topic of today, I got a slapper. I got a slapper ready. I like starting slappy. Derek's prepared. You know, I fucking, but they just, this this is easy to shit. Like, people just keep putting out good music. I'm like, oh, shit, fuck yeah. So anyways, today's Savage Slapper of the Week is a song. I, it, the whole album's great. The song is called Never Fail. It's by Rob Bailey. Okay. But he goes by Kill Rob Bailey as, like, a musical artist, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, the the album is called Over Any, Over Everything. Over Everything, Kill Rob Bailey, my favorite song, is a song called Never Fail. It's fucking, you know, so um, actually, uh, so Rob Bailey is married to Dana Lynn Bailey, and Mm -hmm. she was, for a long time, like, the woman bodybuilder. Like, she was, uh, her physique was, she was muscular as shit. Like, she still is. Right. Okay, but like, but in her peak, she doesn't compete anymore, but in her peak, she was fucking muscular as shit. But she was very feminine. Right. And it was like she had a great physique. And, she, you know, she was rewarded for that. Right. Because um, she won everything. Yeah. You know, and I don't know them well enough to know why she stopped competing and things like that, you know. But um, what kind of competition? Bodybuilding. or And I don't know the division. Right. If it's like physique or I don't know. It's like the posing. Women's divisions. I, 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 bikini competition Yeah, but stuff. Fuck, fuck bikini. Every every fuck do you like our? Oh, I don't know every, enough about it. Every, That's the only one I know. Every girl is like a bikini competitor, and there's really Love nothing. It. There's really nothing. Yeah, but there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing to it. It's like they can't work out hard because they can't get too much muscle. Right. It's just a starvation diet, and a lot of these girls fuck their shit up. Yeah, like they fuck up that. their endocrine system. I've read that. They're like, oh, I'm 22 years old, and I haven't had a period in eight months. Yeah. Like, well, why? So you could take fucking thirteenth place at your regional bikini competition, <laughs> you know? That's mean. It is Savage Saturdays. I'm gonna try not to be that mean, but try not. I'm gonna try not to be that. It's savage. really hard for me to um, 
uh, get into that stuff. But to each their own. To each their own. You know, if that's somebody's dream and they want to be the best at it, that's right. fucking awesome. Compete away. But, um, I had the I had the a really cool opportunity in 2015. It was either 2014, 2015, but I got to go meet Rob and Dana Lynn Bailey. And actually, we hosted like a veterans workout oh, right. at their personal gym that was called the Warhouse. This was before they opened a public gym. Okay. You know, and I got to meet them there and stuff. And I really didn't know fuck all about them. And their company is called Flag Nor Fail. Right. It's really cool. So it's like, you know, um, the, the, the name is cool. Like, it's like, I shall not flag nor fail. Right. Like, I won't quit. And I won't fail, you know? So it's cool. These guys are, they're, they're really cool. So Rob, he's a, he's a businessman through and through. Like he's just an entrepreneur and, mm-hmm. and his music reflects that, you know? And his, it was actually, um, he, he used to do music with a guy, uh, the hustle standard. Okay. So like for, for a lot of their albums, it was Rob Bailey and the hustle standard. And from what I understand, um, over everything kill Rob Bailey is like his solo album now. And he has other people like putting music tracks down and stuff like that. But it was, um, it was an, an uh, the album that came out in 2015 or 16 is, 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 um, it's, it, it inspired me to do an album back then. Like I did a, I put out a fucking like motivational metal album in like really? 2016, dude. It was like, nice. it was, it's, it was funny. So actually, um, it, uh, Rob and Dana Lynn Bailey came to first forms summer smash. Okay. And, it was it was on my drive. Summer Smash was in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. And I was living in Minnesota at the time. And it was like a nine hour drive home. Yep. So I was hanging out with Rob and Dana, um, coming home, uh, I was driving home from Summer Smash. And I was just like, I was like, man, like Rob inspired. I was, you know, because a lot of the things Rob talks about is like, I'm nobody special, but I'm going to do what I want. Right. And I'm just going to have the fucking nuts to try. Even if I can't figure it out on the first time, I'm going to yep. fucking try. And so I was driving home and I was like, I want to try. I, I think I could do this. I want to try. And so I got home and I, and I talked to some friends who made music and stuff. Yeah. Excuse me. And, uh, we made an album. It was called Inspa Moda Idgath. Uh, huh. it was like inspiration, motivation, and, and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so it was like, but so, so it was like metal tracks. Yeah. And then like voiceover motivational speech type things. And okay. it wasn't good. <laughs> the music was great. Right. But it, but it was it was like its own new genre. A little concept. You know, it was its own little new genre. I can't listen to it, but people still listen to it to, to this day. But the, the thing is, is like, I really got fucking boned hard by those guys. Oh. We were working on volume two. Yeah. And we were like, you know, they, they write the music. But just like the way me and you do videos. Yep. It's like you lay down the video and I kind of put my vision into right. it. It's like, this is, so it was... Like I'm a producer in a sense, and so we worked together on um, the tracks for Volume Two for like eight months or something. And I wanted to do so much better on my part. Like I didn't want to just do like voiceover speech. Okay, I was you know like considering singing and screaming and doing yeah. doing music. Right. And I told them I was like I want this to be real music, and literally the fucking tracks were done, and I was about to start the writing process. And I got a fucking email from these guys. They were my friends. We text, we call, things like that. They yeah. sent me an email and said they're going a different direction. So uh. I got fired from my own band that I started. <laughs> like, I started this shit. You got voted off the island. Our, our, first, our first album. So I'll just, you know, like, this is, how, this is how I got boned. And you'll be like, oh, that makes sense, Derek. Um, the first album was number one on the iTunes charts. In the metal genre, okay. which made it super funny because yeah. people that are the reviews, because people are there for metal music right. and people didn't know, you have to know who the fuck I am to, to like that album at all. Okay. And these people had no idea who the fuck I am. And They're the, stumbling the on like, What the fuck is this shit? Why is it number one? This is fucking <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You know, all these like fucking 92 pound little fucking nerds right. just shitting on me. And I, I didn't, I wasn't mad about it. I was like, this is funny. It was this like, yeah, hilarious. absolutely. Cause like, if you don't know who I am, this is bad. Right. You know, but, um, I let those, I, it was, I worked with uh, two guys on the music and they were brothers and I let them keep every penny that we made and we weren't making money at the time or I wasn't making money at the time. Remember we, when we talked about the, in episode, whatever we talked about my business life, this right. is when I didn't have money, right? but I let them keep every penny okay. because I felt like, um, I couldn't have done this without them. And whereas I was kind of getting a few things figured out, 
they wanted to be musicians, but had nothing in the works. And I thought that they did such a good job that they should like, they deserve to win. You know, I was like, they deserve to win. Right. So and, I let you, them keep- and you said the win was you get all the money. Yeah. <laughs> But for, for album one, right. you know, and then, and then they use that money to buy new instruments and things like that. So I was like, fuck yeah. Like, you know, cool. He like, uh, the one dude got a new guitar and things like that. And it wasn't like, it, w- it was like $8,000 right. or something, you know, not a super but, amount, but substantial. But we were younger and yeah. they were younger than me. So fucking uh, Eight grand's like, a lot of money. Yeah. 4k for, you know, sitting there doing something you know, like they split it. And, uh, but yeah, I got, you know, did all that. You know, it was it was my concept, my idea. I was the reason that we sold yeah. as much as we sold, and I let them keep every penny. And then I got fired from my own band. How far how far did that train keep going after they fired you? Do you know? As far as theirs? Yeah. I haven't fucking heard of them. I, I, peeked, <laughs> I peeked in on them a couple times, and I'm like, and you know what, dude? Um, sometimes I still, like, sometimes I think about reaching out right. and being like, hey, Water under the bridge. No hard feelings. You want to fuck. But then I'm like, no, that betrayal, I won't, I can't forgive it. You fired but me. But I want to, yeah. You fired you, me. In an email. You, f- not even, not even a call. In a fucking email. That is, and that's not the, like, that pissed me off more than if they wanted to go a different direction, I'd be like, all right, understandable. But like. Let's talk about in it. An, in an email. We don't, you don't email your fucking bros. No. You know, in a fucking email. It's like getting so, broken up with via yeah. text message mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. So, um, uh, uh, getting back to uh, uh, Rob Bailey, like this, his music, it's kind of like that, where it's kind of like the album type I did, you know? Yeah. Where he's, just, he's just sort of screaming at you and it's like motivational stuff. And sometimes I'm not, I'll be honest, like I'm not in the mood for it, you know? Right. Um, but this, this new album, um, I, I listened to it on Thursday and I had a 5k row that day, a five, 5,000 meter row for time. And I was like, I want to do well. And I didn't sample the album or anything. And okay. I was like, I'm going to put this album on and I'm going to buy into it. Like, I'm just going to believe it, you know? Okay. Cause like the, his, like this, this song, it's just, he's screaming and he's like, it's just, he's just repeatedly screaming. I will not retreat. And then he screams like, I will not fail me. Mm-hmm. So it's things like that. And right. it can sort of be, Sometimes I'm just sort of cunty and I, I think it's, I don't like that kind of motivation, but I realized it's just like military cadence where if you sit there and tell yourself something over and over and over again, right. it's like, why were we so tough? It's like, oh, cause we could run to Fort Bragg just like this, just like you know, this. you know, you know, <laughs> pain in my back, pain in my knees. Good. You know, you know, it's just like you, we, by, by what we like repeat out, we say out loud. Yeah. We just sort of start to believe. Yeah. You and turn so it I was into like, real. I'm going to buy into whatever he's saying at yep. me and I'm going to try hard on this row. And I PR'd my 5k row time by a minute 23. Fuck yeah. and I just felt great, man. Yeah. So like that album hyped me yep. the fuck up. Like, and it, it was especially the whole album is good. And actually like. I'm friends with Rob, like acquaintances. I like we're friends, right? But he's I don't um, I don't bother him or something. Like we don't fucking hang out and shoot right. the shit. Does he know but, you PR'd to your to his yeah, song I, though? Yeah, I okay. told him. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, uh, hold on, I got water. Mm. Mm. Did you see that? I did. I just, just spilled like all over skeeted all over your chest. Yeah. Oh Lord. Anyways, yeah. Oh, I just made a mess all over myself. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the slapper. It's Rob Bailey. Um, never fail. Kill Rob Bailey. Never fail off his new album, Over Everything. So that's music. Guaranteed PR. If Guaranteed you listen PR. To it. Guaranteed PR. Guaranteed. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. There's some There's some tracks where I want to ask him, be like, who hurt you? <laughs> he, he, there's some songs where he talks about like he won't surround himself with fake friends uh-huh. and that he got betrayed and got fucked over and things Common like that. Common story, yeah. I'm just like, man, I what like what's that story? Cuz or you know, I just shared my story and yeah, that's yeah. just that's just one of a few stories of well, me where I kind of like Maybe you think it's a common story. Yeah. Everyone's kind of got that yeah. that group you've had to distance yourself from or yeah. or sever ties with or whatever. Yeah, and he's, you know, is uh it, it's cool. It's a great album. He's got a lot of emotion in it. And and the the, the thing is is like I can get behind him and and, and his music cuz like him and Dana are really good people and they're really cool to follow online they fucking they made it in the fitness industry you know and they could be doing all this like the typical cunty shit 
living in LA, you know, just doing the, the shit. Right. But instead they decided to fuck off and buy like a lake house in Montana. Nice. And they just live that outdoors. They, yep. they made the right move, That's you know? Right, <laughs> yeah. And they just build everything, you yep. know, they're like, you know, so it's, it's cool. They're very, they're good people. They're inspirational. His music's good. It worked for my workout and I guaranteed the, PR. The song never fail. I could, I could just repeat it for 60 minutes. So nice. check it out guys. Um, it's very good. That's music. Um, and that's also the third time you've remembered to do the Savage Slapper. So I'm, I'm Bro, proud of that. Look at me. I know. You got fucking notes. Look at me. I, if you guys aren't watching the video, like, well, I just, everything I do is just, it's all in my head. Right. And sometimes I, I don't even have an idea. And it's like, hey, let's fucking do it live. But Fuck these, it. We're but going these, live. But these podcasts, it's like, if, 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 if I don't come in prepared, mm -hmm. we just sort of do shitty shows. Like, there's no point. There's no right. topic. And, and I don't want the podcast to be just mindless fucking bullshit. Like right. we're, we are going to fuck around. Like we just fucked around for 20 minutes, yeah. you know, but like uh, we have a topic. So if you guys can't see, I got a fucking piece of paper right here. It's got Eric's my slapper. Homework. It's got my topic with a couple bullet points. And, um, I always want to do, um, a couple of questions yeah. from the internet. Yeah. But no, I love doing that. Yeah. We're going to set up an email, um, this weekend. Soon we'll have an email yep. for you guys who are listening to the show. And it's just, so it's just, it's Savage Saturday exclusive. You know, and we'll get questions from this email. Um, and uh, once we get that set up, we'll share with you what it is. Yep. But uh, so that's our that's our administrative and slappy uh, introduction. Um, today's topic: quitting. Quitting. Fucking quit. I used to be a fucking quitter, man. I've quit some things. But no. So, um, quitting. I I I have a I have a story, and it's kind of a longer story. And there's different little bits and pieces, but you know, um. I think people do see me as human or, you know, we, we have this, we have the shirt too stupid to quit. Right. And we like, you know, I'm, I've, I live a very no quit life yep. now. And I think people see that, but it's because I fucking learned from experience how shitty it feels to fucking quit something you're very passionate about. Right. And I never want to feel that way again. And right. so this is the story of when I quit something and it just, it, it, it made me, it made me better, made me stronger. I'll tell you. So it, um, when I was, when I had decided to join the army, I wanted to be a fucking army ranger. I didn't know what the fuck that meant, but I saw Black Hawk down. Yep. <laughs> you know, that looks and cool. So I'll I was do that. like, it was like, I'm gonna be a ranger. I'm gonna be a ranger. I'm gonna be a ranger. I'm gonna be a fucking army ranger. And I meant like, and I didn't even know at the time there was a difference between like ranger battalion and ranger school. Right. I didn't know anything. And nobody was fucking helping me, teaching me things yep. like that, you know? So um, I was gung-ho for sure, like 17, 18. When I went to basic training, I was all about it, man. I was motivated. Um, I was physically fit, but I was I was mentally, I was immature. Mm -hmm. I, didn't ha I didn't have any mental toughness. Right. I had zero mental toughness. And my whole life, if something got at the first sign of adversity... I quit. It's difficult. I I'm quit. gone. I was like, yeah, oh, I quit. And my parents knew that about me. And that's why, like, I bopped around sports, but not because I always did well, new things and stuff. But I definitely, like, in high school, I quit all sports because, yeah. like, the competition got to me. Like, I, it was, I remember the ninth grade wrestling, the, the competitive atmosphere, I cracked under the pressure. Yeah. And I quit, you know, but I was fine with that because yep. I found fucking drugs and music, you know, <laughs> that was way you more know? fun. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but I just, I didn't have any training and mental toughness. I was not mentally tough, you know? Mm. So I wanted to be a fucking army ranger, goddamn airborne ranger. Tech. Okay. So I, you know, didn't know what that meant too much, but I got in the army with an 11 x-ray contract. Yeah. And that means you're just, you're just infantry uncommitted. Right. And, um, in basic training in like week five, they put us in formation and they were smoking us and they says, you know, okay, who wants, who wants a ranger contract? And me and a couple of the guys that were doing well, we're talking shit. Like we're going ranger, we're going ranger. And a couple of these guys raised their hands and I just, I fucking didn't. I bitched out. I was, I was too scared, man. It was like, yeah. the thing was, is like my, you know, a lot of these, uh, 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 I didn't have the confidence. I didn't have the confidence. Right. And I didn't, a lot of these, like I'll, I'll, I'll share my mistakes 
but they, I didn't learn what my mistakes were till like six years after the fact. In hindsight. You know? Yeah. You're looking like, back, oh, like I didn't fuck. have the confidence. I wanted to do it, but I didn't believe that I could. Yep. I, and, I, and I didn't. And so that's a failing and I won't let my boys feel that way. I won't let them feel that way. It's like, or I'll at least tell them like, Hey, if you, you know, if, 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 if you get to that point where you don't think you can try anyways, try, cause that's, right. that's normal. That, that fear is normal. Try anyways. Yeah. I didn't have any fucking, you didn't have the try. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. I was just, I was overwhelmed by the sense that I, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. Which stopped you know? the try. Yeah. And so I'm not, I'm not like overall a pussy and you know, somebody in the army, somebody told me something that was really, really, really good. It was like, um, um, not every soldier is cut out to be an infantryman. Totally. Not every infantryman is cut out to be uh, a paratrooper. Not uh-huh. every paratrooper is cut out to be a ranger. Not every ranger is cut out to be a green beret. Yep. Not every green beret is cut out to be an operator, things like that. And, right. and the thing is that's all okay. Yeah. Like you are, as good as you are. There's a reason these things are fucking hard to get because it takes a special kind of fucking person, Yeah, you know? So, um, I didn't have, I didn't have the fucking nuts to get a Ranger contract. Um, I did have the nuts to get an airborne contract. So I picked up an airborne contract, be, uh, became a paratrooper. And, um, uh, but uh, like my dream, my goal was to, um, you know, once I got to the 82nd, it was, it wasn't, it was no longer like, I didn't want to go to Ranger Battalion or something like that. Um, I wanted to go to Ranger School and I wanted to go to Selection. I wanted to go the Green Beret route, yep. you know, but like 04, 05, we were deploying and shit like that. But 2006, we were stateside all year. Um, my battalion or my company and shit anyways. Um, and so we were just doing a lot of training. Yeah. Um, really cool training. Um, we were gearing up to do a cool mission that got called off because we got called over on the surge, but we were just doing training. So I had time to go to schools. Yep. Um, and so I finally nutted up and, uh, uh, threw my hat in to go to, I said, I want to go to ranger school, but before, so at, at Fort Bragg, before you, before they just send you to ranger school, yeah, you got to go through what's called PRC, you know, pre-ranger, the, the pre-ranger course. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, I think it was like three or four weeks long. Um, yeah, it, it was at least three okay. weeks long. Yeah, you know, and so you know, finally, I fucking I had two combat deployments under my belt at this point. I think I was like an E four. I was a rifle team leader. I had some, I had some good experience, you know, and I was kind of maturing a bit as a soldier, you know. Yep. Um, and so I went to, uh, you know, the pre ranger course started. Um, and at first you do a PT test. First thing you do is the PT test. Yeah, day one. Is, yeah, which is like that, that, that I like that PT test because it was, you know, you have to hit X amount of push ups in two minutes and X amount of sit ups in two minutes. And then you do a five mile run. And this was in Area J. Okay. At Fort Bragg. So it was sand trails, you know. And you have to do pull ups. <laughs> yeah. And then you fucking run your ass over to the pool and it's a swim test. Okay. And the swim test is one of them you have to jump in and fucking get rid of your gear and come back up. One of them, you have to swim 25 meters holding a rifle over your head. Yep. And one of them, you have to walk off the diving board, but maintain your cap or some shit like that. Yeah. You know? So, and I passed, I passed all that shit or I fucking did great, you know? Um, and then, so my first time at PRC, I think I quit on day two or three and I fucking honestly, 100% have no recollection of it. I don't really, I can't remember. I remember, I remember the only thing I remember is going back to my barracks room and you know, I walk into my room and I had two roommates and they're like, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing here? You know, I was like, I fucking quit guys. Like, and you just, it's it's like, if there's a walk of shame, right. It's it's that. Cause like, you you know, to quit something like that, it's called a LOM. Okay. uh, A lack of motivation. Yeah. And so it's, it's not a physical, I didn't fail a test. I didn't fail physically. I failed mentally. Yeah. I don't, and I don't even know why. I, right. I, I have no fucking, I have no knowledge. Some I, I shit can't going on. Yeah. yeah. No, or, well, like, that's what that's what those things are there to do. They're there to test you and they break you. There's a million ways they can fucking trick you into quitting. Right. Okay. Like, but, <laughs> and, and they're looking for the person who can, like, overcome yeah. everything. Every, everything's stupid. Everything difficult. A lot of it is just like dealing with dumb shit. Right. Okay. But, um, I, so I, I have no idea why I quit, honestly. 
Um, but, uh, once you quit, man, it's hard to go back. Yeah. Cause sometimes know? they'll give you a bar to bar to return depending upon how yeah. you get out of there. So They're here's, like, here's what makes everything worse. Um, I had a platoon leader at the time and he was, he was fucking awesome, man. And he was like, I told him, I was like, I fucking quit and I hate myself for it. I want to go back. I want to try again. I fucked up. I fucked up. Right. I should not have quit. Send me back and I won't fucking quit. And he, and it took a couple months or something, but he like personally wrote a letter to, I don't know, the battalion brigade commander or something like that. It was yeah. like a letter of recommendation to let me back in early. And so now this guy fucking signed off on me Yeah, and his he name vouched for uh, you. Yeah. And so if I go there and fuck up, it makes him look like shit, you yep. know? And at this time we had like a new first sergeant, new company commander and stuff. And so, all right. So I got my. I got my chance to redeem myself. Right. I'm going back. I'm going back to PRC. And this time I'm going with like a, a, quite a few guys from my platoon um, went to this PRC class with me. And uh, so I had friends there. I knew yeah. people, you know. So um, PRC attempt take two um, starts with the PT test. I was, in, I was in even better shape this time. Okay. But uh, so we get to the PT test. And these motherfuckers recognize me. The cadre. Oh, same they, cadre. They, same Because it's only been this two dude, months. The thing is, is like, here's not taught physically and soldier, uh, like physically and technically. I was the perfect. I'm the, I was the, I was exactly what that person is. Okay. Mentally, I was a fucking huge pussy. Mentally, yeah. like mental toughness wise, I was way behind. And like, this isn't to say I was a pussy. I was a good paratrooper. Right. I just wasn't a good ranger yet. Right. Or a ranger qualified paratrooper, right. you right. know? Um, and so I wasn't there and they, they knew that. And so, and they, they don't respect that, but they, they want, I think they wanted the, the, the RIs, the Ranger instructors, they wanted me to do well. They wanted me to get there. Just snap out of the know? pussiness. Um, but, uh, they weren't just going to hand it to me. So I get to the <laughs> push ups, and that motherfucker remembered me and he made like the, the, you know, he's counting my push ups, the Ranger instructor. And he, you know, he's like, Oh, Hey, Whita. Zero, 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 zero. I must have no shit done 120 push-ups <laughs> to get credit for like 72. <laughs> and I, you can't say anything, you know? Nope. And like, I mean, it was, we do that in the army oh, yeah. all the time, but this was above and beyond. Yeah. Like I was fucked up. And with like 30 seconds, I wasn't at a passing score yet. Yep. And I was like, the- he was, he was getting me right there. I was like, I don't know if I can fucking, I, am I going to fail? On the fucking day one push-ups, yeah. is, is, does he not even want me here? He's and trying so to was, win the that pool. That was like, yeah, that was my first little <laughs> mental test there, you know, which is a silly one, but you know, so I, I did that, did the sit-ups, and then it was funny. The five mile run kicked off, and running was my fucking jam, dude. Yeah, you, nobody, people didn't run, no, people didn't run better than me, right? You know, um, I had that one motherfucker Delaney who outran me. I think I told the story about him before. I think so. But anyway, so this this PRC class. You know, you run in the woods, you run out two and a half miles, there's a turnaround point, you come back. Some motherfucker was dusting my ass. And I'm talking, I think I finished that run, the five miles, in it was like 30 minutes and 20 seconds or something like that. So that's okay. sand. That's, you know, like yeah. a 602 a hard mile run. for five miles in sand. Uh, so I'm fucking moving, dude. And this guy, this this dude, he was, uh, he was you know, when we were running towards each other because he had already made the turnaround point. Yep. He was like, he was like, come on, man, step it out. I'm like, fuck you, dude. I am. Fuck you. Flash. What's wrong with you? You know, <laughs> but then uh, I'll get, I'll get back to him in a, in a, uh, later on in the story. He was a good runner. He wasn't, he wasn't good at much else. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He had running yeah. down though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I crushed that. And, and the, a really cool thing was, is um we had a new first sergeant and he was at the finish line for the run. And like, he looked proud as shit to see one of his guys yeah. coming in so early. Right. You know? And I was like, cool. The, like these guys feel good about me. My leadership believes in me. Right. They, they fucking, they, they, they took a risk, put their names out there to vouch for me to come back to this school. Um, and, uh, I felt like I did them. I'm not going to let them down one proud. Yeah. Day, you know? For so, sure. Yeah. So PT test goes fine. And then, you know, they, they take you out to where, um, the school is. Yep. And they drive you out there, and as soon as you get there, they stop like five miles out from the school, and they're like, "Everybody out of the trucks!" And then they got like fucking arty sim rounds, you know. So it's like um, they just like pop shit off, and it's like, "Hit the deck! What do you do when you're getting mortared? That's right, flutter kicks!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Always so in doing Iraq, I just kicks. went to my training, and as soon as the mortar popped off, I started doing <laughs> flutter kicks. Like, what am I doing? What the yeah. Fuck? Now they just smoke your ass, you know, and that's all yep. it is. And um, that's funny. And then uh, you go do a, you go do your layout, you know. So you fucking run, and the run, the the the, the run to, uh. This is where the where the school is. It's just like three shacks. There's an HQ shack, a barracks, and then an aid station. Okay. The aid station is very important in this story. Okay. There's a lot of cool. I'm just gonna tell the story of uh, or a lot of cool things that happen. So you you run there, and it's like I don't know two to five miles, but it takes you a fucking hour because they just sit there and smoke you the whole way. Yep. And then you do an equipment layout, so you have to. You know, in the military, you just, like, dump your rock and lay everything out, and they make sure that you have everything on the packing list. And if you're missing something, they smoke everybody. Oh, and yeah. if you're fucking um, trying to sneak shit in, they smoke everybody. But they smoke you anyways. Like right. The, the you're point getting is, smoked. You're getting fucked up, yeah. Um, and if uh, as, uh, civilian listeners, if you don't know what smoked means, it's just, like, it's just push-ups, front, back, goes. It's like, you're just, it's nonstop physical training. Yeah. You know? Trying so, to get muscle yeah. failure. So, dude, I was, um, so physically at this point, I was, I was, I, it was, I was very good. You couldn't, you couldn't smoke me. Right. It's funny. And so actually, so the, um, the medics that were assigned, cause the medics, I guess, rotate out in teams. Okay. And the medics for this class were our battalion medics. So I knew these guys. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. And so, so we're all sitting there getting smoked and stuff. And there was actually, um, a, a guy, Doc Clark, who actually passed. Um, I think a year or so ago, um, he was a fucking, he was, he was everybody's, he was everybody's, he was that guy. Everybody yeah, loved everyone him. Everyone loved him. You know, and he was just sitting there on a water cooler staring at me and he was like, look at fucking Whitey just sitting there having a good time, fucking <laughs> smiling. I'm like, shut the <laughs> fuck up, doc. Like I am literally trying to fly <laughs> under, under the, radar. the radar here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't draw attention to so, me. So Yeah. So that went on and every, everything was going well, man. Like. I was doing well. I can't remember everything, but uh, I was I was physically, I was solid. Right. Technically and tactically, fucking solid. So yep. you have to do your land nav test. Um, and this is I liked I liked this. So um, land nav in the PRC at the time is you had to find ten points. And I think you had from you know land nav started at zero one till zero seven. Okay. So you start in the dark, and so right. you're fucking doing land nav at night and shit like that. Um, but it's just a test to see if you can do land nav, yep. you know, are uh, you good at land nav? As, oh yeah. I was very yeah, good. Yeah. I was so always like, good the, at the land thing nav. is like the thing is I was solid, you yep. know? And so the, it starts at zero one, but no matter how good you are, fuck doing land nav at night with no fucking night vision, you know, like literally like walking through the woods, finding a fucking point in the mm-hmm. dark, fuck that shit. So I, um, and, and you're fucking like, say it starts at zero one, maybe you fucking went you got some sleep starting at like 1130, 2330 or something like that. So maybe you're on an hour of sleep or something, you know, and you have to go plot all your fucking, um, all your points, all your points, things like that. And then you set off and I was like, fuck this shit. Um, there was a, they, they said a hilltop, we'll just call it hilltop 104 or something like that. That's where the medics were going to be. Okay. And they had a big ass fire, big ass bonfire. They're like, do not do not go. Don't to go the to fire. the fire. But this is if you're if you're fucked up. This is where you'll find the medics, and they'll be marked. And it was a big fire, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, I'm gonna go up there." So like, <laughs> <laughs> got got my points, and I was like, "Fuck!" I'm you like, I, I I went I went straight to that hilltop, and I and I knew my route for that <laughs> evening. I had all my points. I knew what I was gonna do. But my first thing is, I went up to that hilltop. I stayed just out of sight of the light. Yeah. And I fucking laid down on my watch, set my watch for zero five and I went to sleep and I was like, I can find these points in two hours. Okay. And I, but I was like, I'm going to have to move. Right. So, you know, there's 10 points and I think you have to find seven or so to pass. And I was like, yeah, no problem. So I went and got like four hours of sleep. Just, you know, that was nice. Yeah. And I woke up, I was like, okay, time to get to work. Hey, time to you land know? nav. Yeah. Uh huh. So I'm fucking, I'm, I'm out there, I'm moving and it's like, boom, 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 boom. I'm finding all of them. I didn't, I couldn't find one point. I ended up getting nine out of 10 points. Okay. I fucking, to this day, I contend that there was no marker at that point. <laughs> you know? Quite like, possible. I was in the right place, right. man. I swear to, I don't know. I don't know if that's something they do or if I didn't, if I failed to find it, but I right. swear to fuck. It's supposed to I be right, right here. Place. Yeah. So it was funny, man. Um, A lot of people do struggle at land nav. You yeah. Know? It's, it's, there's a lot. It's tough. And I, like land nav, like we don't have fucking... 
uh, computers or something. Right. It is straight map, compass, protractor. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's Some all Some people get. have a hard time going from woods map to real world. Yeah. And this, then this shit is fucking thick, man. It's like got the, the kazoo. Woods. So, you know, it's like, you know, if, and so if you, if you try to follow a straight line, yeah, but if you have that. to go around something, you have to know how to figure out your course. Right. Or it's like, fuck this. It, it's our, everything is dark. But if you see like a black hole in the woods, that's your like, I don't want to go in there, you know? Right. Sometimes if you, <laughs> if you don't, <laughs> sometimes people go in there. And right. It fucks them up, you know? Um, your point's not in there. So it's super funny, man. I was, I was out there doing land nav and uh, the, the, the guy that beat me on the run, I, I passed him out there on land nav and out there, your all your equipment is tied down. Yep. You know, cause you're tired. They don't want you losing stuff. He was like, he, everything was dangling. Just dragging. He was ate the fuck <laughs> up. Everything was dangling, man. And he was like, he was like, Hey man, can you help me? And you're not supposed to help each other and stuff like that. But of course you're going to. Right. And I was like, I was like, I was like, uh, shit. Yeah, man. I'm gonna be like, I'm on kind of a time crunch. Cause I slept for four hours. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, that one got some shit eye. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. what was wrong with him? What so do you need help with? He he was just he couldn't land nav. Oh, and fine I was like, I was shit. like, yeah, I was like, I was like, okay, how many points have you found? And he was like, none. And I was like, Jesus. dog, it's like zero five thirty. Yeah, you're like, in trouble. You're, you're like, there's no helping you. You should just go back to you're a you're running. A, you're a failure at this time. Go back to you running. Know? Like you can. I don't know if you can redo land nav in PRC or not. I don't know. I think you get to try it one more time. Actually, you must, because my good friend failed. I think time. most of those things you get one, you get one redo. Yeah, because we had it. We had possibly. A, I just don't. I didn't know. My, we had a guy who did who had to do every single thing over again, and he was yeah. at he was at Ranger School for like six months or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, can I take a pee break? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> can we acknowledge the pee break? Yeah. Like sometimes I pee during these shows, and I'm back. And uh, 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 so where was I? Where where were we? It was it was fail. The, it was the guy who could run. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So he not was just, being he able was to find fucked. shit. Yeah. He didn't. Yep. He didn't. Uh, gra- he didn't pass that uh, class. But he didn't. But he didn't quit. You know. Right. He just didn't have the the soldiering skills to pass. So anyways, every everything's going good, man. And um, I uh, let me scoot in here. This was in December, December two thousand six. Um, and a, and a couple things. I'll get you know. Um, I was having a good time. I was, I was actually, I was having, I was, everything was going great. I was enjoying myself. I was doing well. Um, actually, so one of my, one of my friends, he is like my best friend in the army. He was at that PRC class and he ended up failing, um, land nav once or twice. He, he failed something and you know, it's like he got kicked out, but not, oh, okay. I don't know a nicer word for it. It's like, Hey, you didn't pass, but you're welcome to come like, go, go back and train and you're yep. welcome to come back. Right. If you LOM, if you quit, you can't come back. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, it's like a year or something yeah. like that. But if you just don't pass something, they're like, Hey, no, no worries. dude. Go home, like, train, yeah, get go better train, and then yeah, come back, get better. Yep. And so, so now, um, so my, my friend knows where this, he, he's out, he's got a cell phone and he knows where we are. The aid station has a telephone in there. And, uh, it was our battalion medics. So I'm friends with the guys in the aid station. And at, so it was like the barracks are here. The aid station is here. And then the HQ building was here, you know, and there was only, maybe only like one RI a night on duty. Okay. And so, um, I was, dude, I was a fucking shysty motherfucker. I feel like you're going to start telling a smuggling story. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I've always, I've always, you know, I've always, it was, um, I've, I, you know, I, I, I was, I read masters of chaos or like, cause I wanted to go the green beret route, you know? Right. And, and I'll, like, I always, when I say things like that, I don't know, I'm not talking shit. Like I would have made it or something, but at the time, these were my fucking goals. Yeah. These were my dreams. I want to do this. And so Pursue I was it. like reading books about that, like, like SOG and there was cool, like Bravo two zero, uh, roughneck, you know, what nine, nine, one or something like that. But anyways, masters of chaos talked about like these guys in selection Mm -hmm. and the things they would do to cheat. Oh, I fucking read that. Not, not it's yeah. Like not, it's, you know, like there's, there's cheating and then there's, there's gray area. Smart. There's being smart. Working smarter. So, um, at PRC, you can't have fucking chew. I, I chew and I chewed a lot back then too, you know? So, um, um, one night I fucking, uh, I got the balls. I, you know, snuck over to the aid station or like during the day, I was like, doc, I'm going to fucking come use the phone tonight. And he was like, Oh, I was like, don't be a fucking bitch. Don't be doc. A bitch like, doc. I'm going to come use the phone tonight. So 
So I fucking ran over to the aid station, got on the phone, called my buddy. And I went around the platoon and I asked guys, I'm like, hey, what do you need? You know, I was like, we're, uh-huh. gonna, we're doing, we're fucking doing this shit. I was like, what do you need? And this guy's like, I need more socks. One motherfucker wanted cold weather boots. And I was like, oh, that's a tall order, man. Right. You know, because so this was December at Fort Bragg. It's fucking cold. Okay. It's very cold. Um, and so anyways, I got a list of, of things people needed and I needed chew. And I, and I told, uh, I had my buddy, his name is Billy, um, called him up and he drove my car out in that direction but then he fucking you know pulled the car off the road right into the woods and then he's fucking humping shit back there you know <laughs> and he just brought some stuff you know and so there and then i um all i got was fucking chew um and in the barracks i like pulled up a tile from the floor and i hit it under the floor okay. i hit my chew under the floor you know it's <laughs> so like that's the kind of fucking soldier i was always <laughs> always I was like when we got in Iraq um, on the surge deployment when we had nothing. Yeah, I, I, I was I was living like the king. I had a pillow and a mattress and a fan. Yeah, because I made friends with the fucking uh, the electrician that was wiring our cop, and he was he was bringing me stuff from out in town. You know, you know, you got to know how to fucking yeah. You know, there's there's yeah, there's, there's, time, there's there's rules that you follow that are you know. Um, they're good rules to follow, mm-hmm. but then there's dumb rules to follow. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes like, don't be lazy about your life. Make right. shit happen. So I've been sitting like, so in PRC, I, I can't remember if we did like one run or two runs like that. You know, I can't remember, but I know that I got some shit. Did um, the guy get his boots? I believe so. I mean, this we're like, I, I mean, I think so. I remember, I remember boots showing up and socks showing wow. up. Wow. To be honest, my memory's so fucked up. I might have been the guy that got the boots. I don't okay. know. <laughs> you know? It might have been it me who needed boots. Could have been my boots. This was fourteen years ago. You know. Uh, <laughs> I do remember that I got some uh, dip, but I yeah, I got the chew, and that was like that was like gold. Oh Man, yeah. And everybody wanted that, but um. So, anyways, um, this 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 part of the story is important to me because um so when you you know um prc or ranger ranger school is a leadership course Mm -hmm. you know and that's that's really all it is um and and prc you spend a lot of time doing missions you know but it's just to put people in leadership roles doing op orders kill people yeah yeah. so you have to like the op order and then you um and so sometimes when someone's leading a patrol the rest of the unit unit is just you know at the patrol base. Right. And so your job that day is just to lay there for eight hours, you know, cause somebody else is like doing their leadership yeah, thing yeah. and like the RIs will come by and make sure you're awake and things like that. You're not but just you're, like, you're wh- sort of like left alone. Okay. And so anyways, it was, it was a cold ass rainy day and I was in a fucking foxhole with a friend of mine. Um, uh, we had been in the same, um, unit for two years. A good friend of mine, Zach, Tom, Zach, and we were just, we, it was fucking cold, man. And so we were, we were laying on top of each other. Of course. And I remember like, and Todd, uh, Tom Zach wasn't a big rule breaker. He's like scared, you know? Yeah. But he, he also chewed. Okay. And oh man. So we were fucking, we were He's chewing. like me. We, we, I'm like that. I'm not we, a big yeah, rule breaker. We were chewing a little bit and it was so funny because he was giggling. He was like, oh, man, <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy. I'm such a fucking rebel. You know, so we're like sitting there laying on top, top of each other and we're chewing and he's giggly and shit. I'm like, God damn it. You're a dork. You yeah. know, it's fucking tobacco, man. I know, but, but um, I'm not supposed to have it, which yeah. makes it better. Yeah, which is funny. So um, he went on to, you know, he, 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 he didn't quit like I did. And he went to ranger school um, and, and we had gotten deployed. So he was in ranger school for like the first six months or so. I think he showed up. Um, in like July to the unit and I had already been shot at this point. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. So, but then he ended up, um, um, dying the 25th of September. He got shot out in sector through the chest. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I, I believe this is accurate. Like he, like they made it to a medevac chopper, but he didn't make the flight. I think oh. he drowned in his blood, but yeah. anyways, like, you know, so he, he, he went on to graduate all that shit, but like, um, got to Iraq and, and got shot. And I got that news when I was in the hospital. That was a tough one. Yeah. You know, like there was a lot of tough news oh, yeah. that year, but it's like, that was a shitty feeling, like feeling helpless in yep. the hospital, 
Um, and one of your good friends just died, but I like, I, but I, I'll never for, of all the things I do forget, I'll never forget him fucking giggling <laughs> like a little goddamn girl while like my, you know, and you know, we're laying on top of while each you're other. nuzzling we're like, each other. Yeah, we're, we're like, you know, a quarter inch of fabric away from penetration. Uh-huh. You know? Just <laughs> so, trying to stay warm, man. Yeah. Don't mind me. I definitely mm-hmm. did that a few times. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. I went through airborne school in, uh, in in uh, 2004 in late november early december and that shit it's cold fuck yeah and you don't and it's shorts and t-shirt out there yeah and it's like high 20s low 30s at zero four in the morning and so you know like the whole 200 there's two platoons whatever in airborne school yep and that there is you could not pack so many people in a tighter circle right <laughs> You know, we're like fucking penguins Come out on. there. It's just exactly bunch, what it's just like. Just a bunch of fucking penguins, it's man. Trying to make more heat. Yeah. Take yeah. turns on the outside. Yep. So, um, so you know, every everything was going good. I, you know, I was, I was having, I was having a good time. Yeah. And uh, it was cold. It was tough, but I wasn't breaking or anything like that. Here's here's where we get to my mistakes. Um, like I said, uh, um, it was. I think there was like three days left before graduation. And you almost made it. Yeah. And I, and, and when I quit the, the dude, the guy that was like fucking me on the push ups, Yeah. He was like, don't, you know, he, he, he didn't say don't do this, Derek. Right. But he was like, are you sure you want to do this? Are you, are you sure you want to do this? And he was giving me a look like, don't do this motherfucker. Yeah. Like you're doing a good job. You're having a moment of weakness. Don't make this final decision. And I was just like, final, you know, like this is, this is my decision. I'm quitting. But, um, and it was, it was, it was, it was a stupid reason to quit. And, but it was like, this is the lesson I learned. Like I was, I was, um, I was, I was going to be the squad leader on the final mission. Like, okay. I, was, I was doing good. I don't know. I may have been, I was definitely a candidate for honor grad. Not that that means anything. I no, just say that because well. I was doing well. Yeah. I was doing well. Um, and, uh, one of my friends was in charge of like the planning of the mission. And it was like the, op, like doing the op order or something like okay. that. And we, you know, we had been trained on all this shit. Right. And I remember the guys that were running this, this, like the planning, they, they were so ate the fuck up. They didn't know anything. They didn't know any of the shit. And it pissed me off that they were, they were going to graduate and they did, you know, it pissed me off that I was like, I was like, wait, if, if these, if, what does this all mean? If shitty people can get through. Like what, why am I out here for like, what is it like, you know, is, you know, cause I fucking coveted the Ranger tab, mm-hmm. you know, I was like, uh, but then I, I was like, well, it's a lie. It's a sham. It's like, it's like, this isn't hard and it doesn't mean anything. If, if like dumb people can make it through, what does it truly mean? Nothing. That was, that was my thought process. Okay. You know, and, um, that's what got me. That's what got me is I just like, didn't. I lost, uh, you know, like, so looking back, I didn't know at the time I was just, I was, I was frustrated and I quit Yep. looking back. That's one of the fucking tests. And, and I learned that, um, um, it, if you have a goal, if you have something you want to do, the only thing that matters is what it means to you. Right. And it doesn't matter who, cause, and like, we know, like they're shitty fucking soldiers, 100%. they're shitty fucking paratroopers, yeah. they're shitty fucking rangers mm-hmm. in ranger battalion. They're shitty fucking green berets. Yep. They're shitty seals. Like everybody has their shit bags, yeah. but y- it doesn't have to be that way, you know? And there's, it, 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 it just it, is, but yeah, but it, but it doesn't, it doesn't just because they're shitty seals doesn't mean that Navy seals are, oh, yeah. are fucking right, right. Are, are shitty and you know, so I lost sight of that. You know, it was like for me, like I'm very all or nothing. Or I believed yep. in the sanctity of soldiering. You know? Right. Um, I was I was young and I was eager and I was um, so that that's that's what got me and I remember it. And I was just like, fuck this. Like, I'm not going to like, fuck this. So you, so you quit on a fuck this. On a, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. On, on a, a fuck on this. A I was fuck doing this well. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. But so also, and this like, so I, I quit and I shouldn't have quit. Yep. Um, but also this was December, 2006 and it was, I was, it was our, our medics and at the aid station and the word on the street was that the surge was about to go down. Okay. And that, and our battalion was on QRF. And the, so the word on the street was, is we were going overseas. Yeah. And so that was a real consideration. Yep. Um, it was in my mind, but, um, I quit 
for bad reasons. I didn't quit because I was like, oh no, I'm going to, I'm going to leave just in case we get deployed. I'm but it was, miss it, the... it was, it was there. Right. It was there. Um, but uh, I quit, I quit for a bad reason. I actually have, I actually have this notebook still. And, um, I was, um, there's notes in it and I was, and I wrote to my buddy, I was like, Hey man, you want to just fucking, fucking leave this shit. And, and he was like, if you do, he, you know, he's like, if you do, I will. I was like, this is fucking dumb, dude. Like this is fucking stupid. But I just lost my patience. Yeah. I, lo- I lost my patience and I lost sight of why I was there. I wasn't there for anybody else. I didn't like nobody else fucking matters. Right. It mattered to me. It mat and it and and it and it still matters to me. Yep. And I fucked it up. You know? So I I, I so lack of motivation. Three yep. like three days left. That means like a day and a half left because the you know, you you you, know, you were almost done. I, yeah. But, and so that's PRC. So then you would have gone on to ranger school after that and yeah. done, done the, yeah. like the more course. Yeah. And that's, and that's, I don't even remember how long that is. Like, I know there's three phases, like three, three week phases, four I weeks. Remember. I don't know. I don't know. Didn't get there. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, so I quit and, uh, um, it was, it was, it, it was stupid. It was like one moment of weakness and now you'll now you when won't you, know when you make a decision in a moment of weakness. I mean, everybody has moments of weakness. Oh, totally. or the, yeah, like yeah. the whole time you're out there is a moment of weakness. Right. You're Stretched always out you're for a few always, weeks. Yeah. Um, and uh, but so for me, it was like I was like quitting for me was always an option. It was always an option. Right. I didn't have to be there. You know, it was always an option. And actually, I just finished that 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 book Fortitude uh-huh. by Dan Crenshaw. Yep. And one of the chapters in there, it's called No Plan B. And he was like, he was like, you know, don't have a, it's a slippery thing to say. Cause it's like, don't have a plan B. Like if there's a plan B, um, there's an option to quit, you know, or for his story, it's like getting through buds and things like that. And he had like broken his foot in hell week or something and had yeah. to recycle. But he was like, quitting for me was just like, it was, it was in my mind, but just, it wasn't an option. Right. Cause like, this it, is why it I'm wasn't an option, but I'm, I'm not that. No, you said I don't you know were... if those people are being honest when they say like that, you know, or I don't know. But I'm a I'm a skeptical, shysty motherfucker. Everything is always an option for me. Right. Everything is always an option. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, everything is always an option. So don't I have to be here. And um, you know what, man? Like I quit, um, that PRC, but I didn't quit on the goal. So like to me, I was like, fuck. So my first time, I made it like two days. All right. My second time, I made it you know, two days from the finish. And I was like, God damn it. I was almost there. And it was pretty quick that I learned my lesson. How fast? I was just thinking that as you're saying it, it was like, how, how fast till you were just like, fuck, what did I do? I didn't understand the why for several years, but I understood the mistake. (laughs) Quitting at all was a mistake. Yeah. Quitting at all was a mistake. Yep. But, um, at the same time, it kind of, it worked out and like, cause we did leave our unit left. Our unit was in So like, our unit was in Iraq on January 2nd, 2007. Oh, wow. I was in PRC December 2006. Yeah. I would have missed, you know, so so most of the guys, if the guys from that class that went on to ranger school, they didn't show up to the unit until like June or July. Yeah. And that's, dude, January to January to August was the war. Right. You know, like that, that was the stuff you didn't, if you, if you wanted to go to war, you didn't want to miss those months. Right. You know, so I'm like, I'm glad that, or it worked out, you know, but I, I, I shouldn't have quit still. I should yep. have, I shouldn't have quit. So, um, I did, I did the, you know, the return of shame and cause now it's like, fuck dude, yeah. I, like all these guys like, vouched like, for you. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta face my platoon leader. And so the first thing I had to do is I had to go report to my first sergeant and he was sitting there at his desk, like typing away at his computer and he had already heard, you know, yeah, of course. and I was just standing there in the doorway and he didn't even look at me and he, and he, and he, he wasn't kidding. He said, uh, he said, you're the biggest fucking piece of shit I've ever met in my life, Whita. And he said, get the fuck out of my company. And they kicked me out of the company. No yeah, shit. Yeah, I'd been in the same company for two years, but um, uh, I was in Bravo Company 2325 for two years. That's where all my friends were. That's yeah. where, And we had fucking been to war a couple times together and things like that. But because yeah. I quit PRC again, dude, the dude is just straight up like, he like said the words like, you're the biggest fucking piece of shit I've ever met in my life. Get the fuck out of my company. And they kicked me out. See you later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. 
So I went to Charlie Company. I went to Charlie Company. Like, fucking literally we're gearing up to go to war. Like, right. I'm, like I report to Charlie Company while we're organizing the pre-deployment thing. Because we're, like, we're the quick deployment stuff, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, I quit PRC. We went home on Christmas leave. Um, and December December 27th, we got the phone call. Get your asses back. We're going overseas. Because in the 82nd, it's the short notice yeah. deployment yeah, type yeah. thing, you know? So I literally, I was with this unit for, like, a week. And, and there was, um, it was, it was kind of funny because like, uh, I was a team leader in Bravo Mm -hmm. company and there wasn't a team leader position in my new platoon, Wait, where were you? but I was better than the other team leaders. And so they made me a team leader. And then all of a sudden I had this person who was a team leader under me and it was just like drama and shit like that. But I was kind of there, you know, my, 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 my new platoon sergeant was fucking cool, man. And like, so I showed up and I reported to him and he's like, Hey. I, I know what happened. I know what you did. And I just want to let you know, like, I don't give a fuck about any of that. Like, you're here now. If you do a good job, cool. Like, you right. know, no, no, no. And he was a Ranger uh, qualified guy and stuff like that. But he just, like, I showed up with a clean slate. You know, they didn't, yeah, like, fucking which is shame nice. me. Because, yeah, and he was like, he was like, you know, we, 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 there's other things that we know about you that make you a good Per, uh, good soldier right you know? that, o- that <laughs> so, overshadow that yeah. you quit yeah mm-hmm. so so that was cool so that was nice you know and um and uh we got deployed and i was like you know i'd grown up over the years in the army like first deployment you grow up quick second yep. deployment you're, you're you know you're getting there that third deployment fuck, i was ready for anything dude like right. i was I, I that i was finally tough you know, like, cause you know, it was like, that was a tough deployment. Like you have to, you know, like, and I, that was the deployment. I like, I accepted my death. Right. I wasn't afraid of death anymore. I was like, I'm going to die. That's okay. Fucking can't wait for it. Can't wait to die for my country type shit. You know, like there's no better way to die. So there's, there's nothing to fear. Literally, like the worst that can happen over here is that I die the best possible way ever. You know, <laughs> like that's it. like, that's, right. and I believed, you know, yeah. it was like die for my country, die for my family, die for my friends. I would rather I die than you die type shit. You right. know, I let those motherfuckers keep all the money from that musical album. Yep. I'm just that kind of guy, yeah. you know, like I will fucking, um, so I grew up and I was, I was, I was continuing. We're at war, you know, and it's busy, but there is downtime continuing my education, continuing, um, trying to grow as a soldier because i was like yo i'll just my plan was i was going to go to selection as soon as we got back you know um and i think i would have had a good chance i i i I learned from those mistakes you know it's like i fuck up i did a little better the second time i fucked up again it's like okay now i'm 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 there i've I've learned these lessons you know um but then of course what happened happened you know and i was like i got shot (laughs) yep so um uh that and that just that just ended it you yeah know? which is which is tough you know like i i i underst i do everything that happened in my life had to happen for me to have the life that i have today and i really like my life today right so i don't have any shame or regret i like i i, I really don't have it i'm not ashamed that i quit prc twice right like i i didn't have what it took like i had what it take to i had what it took at the time to try I didn't have what it took to pass, you know, and that's mm-hmm. okay. Cause like, I wasn't just born a fucking stud and actually like some people make it through on the first time, you know, but you know, I just seem to talk about this all the time. I listened to a pod, uh, one of Jocko's podcasts yeah. with, um, Pat McNamara McNamara. Yeah. And, um, this guy was the sh- fucking real deal. Yeah. Like a fucking operator mm-hmm. and, his story, he's like, I, you know, like I fucked that up. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pass that, but I went back. He, 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 he failed things, but went back. Yeah. He said, you know, he, he was, said he could write a book on his failures. I right. Think, yeah. In the and I was like, oh yeah. So like, I don't feel bad that I quit, but, but now, uh, um, because I did quit and what happened to me happened, I got shot and medically retired. It sucks not knowing if I'm, if I truly do have what it takes, yep. but getting shot, I think getting shot and the, what I went through those following years and becoming an amputee and living as an amputee, I think make is like, that has made me mentally tough 
yes. You know, right. I don't, it, like it's made me, um, I, I sometimes I wonder if like, if, if this was more challenging than that life, you know, but, um, but the thing is, is like, I'll never know if I have what it takes to accomplish my dream. Right. I mean, it's not my, it's not my dream anymore. It all, it'll always be, I guess it'll always be my dream. No, but I know I have other dreams. Like, could you know, I have, like, could I have back then? Could I, did I have what it takes or, or could I have gone back and accomplished the goal that yeah. I had originally set out for? Or it's like the, like a, that's like, you know, it's not that I just, I didn't want, I wasn't like pursuing the accolades. I didn't, I didn't want to go the special forces route because I wanted to wear a green beret. I wanted to do that job yeah. with those people. Yep. And I fucking, I look, I, I have the most amount of respect and admiration for those people. I want to be like them. Right. But now I don't know if I have the character to be like them. And, right. I, and I can't even test myself. I can't right. even find out. Yep. It fucking sucks. Yep. It's, a, it's a really shitty feeling. But, you know, and so, and so now for me, like to, um, when, when, when I'll talk to somebody who d- did cool shit, like whether they were, um, ranger or green beret or, or whatever the fuck they were if they were in that in that world and they're and they like respect me yeah i'm just like fuck that mean that that means everything to me to right. have your respect yeah as a person as a man you yeah. know because because um i would you know i just i love i really love that world yeah I, um would like to have been a part of it but now i'll never know and maybe like maybe the truth is like i'm not maybe Maybe the truth is I don't have what it takes to be that person. I can't fucking know. Right. It fucking sucks. It's, it's all Schro- because I fucking quit. Schrodinger's cat. And it's cat. all because I fuck. Yeah. Sh- yeah. <laughs> Schro- yeah. The For fucking real. cat. Yeah. Is it alive or is it dead? Is it, it, is, it is God both damn. alive and dead at the same time. Very true. Yeah. No. So I, I just never know. And it's and it's because I quit. But, um, I, you know, I um, so that feeling, the feeling of quitting. So, like, I, I'm a no quit person now. You yeah. know, like I will quit things for good reasons. I don't, um, because I'm better spent on something else type of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, I quit my fucking bullshit music career because and I won't even start it because yeah, but it made you sad. It's good. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good thing to quit, but right. like I don't quit things that are important to me because that's the worst feeling ever. And if you, um, if you make that a habit, you're fucked. And so like quitting, quitting PRC the second time, that was a huge blow. Got kicked out of my company you know, I got told you're the biggest piece of shit I've ever met. Yeah, that's but fucking I, but big. But I was like, but I was like, I'm not gonna believe that because that's not true. Yeah, because there's huge time. pieces of shit in your company. To be honest, I think you're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I was but like, I, I was like, we that. used to run really fucking fast here in this company, but then some new people showed up, and that's it, right, and, and, and now it's, it's all slow. Gone, it's gone a little downhill. Okay, a group yeah. ain't as fast but, as it used yeah. to be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So don't give you that fucking shit. Um, <laughs> But uh, I didn't. I didn't accept that defeat. I didn't say. I didn't. Um, I didn't say. Okay, I'm a failure. Uh, but it would have been easy to fall into a cycle of wallowing and quitting. You know. So I, I did it once. I did it twice. I had had my fucking fill. I hated that feeling, and I learned what that feeling was like. And I learned that I hated that feeling. Mm-hmm. And so now, and like that, like actually quitting PRC that second time, probably. It might have been the it was better a juice. Huge, it was a huge growth moment. Yeah. For me, you know, and I could see how, um, dude, if you get addicted to quitting, you are so, you're so fucked. Like you are so like, I have, I have two stories of quitting. That's, that's a, that's a heavy thing to fucking carry. Some people have 10 years of quitting. Oh, right. Just 10 years of quitting. And they're not just like quitting on their like a fucking overly ambitious dream. They, they, they can't even fucking eat right. Right. They can't even drink water instead of pop. They can't even work out for 20 minutes a fucking day yep. because they are so in the habit of quitting and they feel like such a fucking loser, such a fucking failure. Which compounds on the yeah. quitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when, you know, when I got told you're the biggest piece of shit I've ever met in my life, I didn't, I didn't believe that. I didn't believe it. You know, and like after, after I got shot and stuff, I had... I did believe, or sometimes I do believe that when I'm sad, when I'm depressed, that's my inner voice. Yeah, and I have to overcome that, you know. But it's it's not true, and I I think um, 
I, I, all I know is like, I never want to quit again because I don't want to feel that way. And it's, it's that easy. It's a choice. Like if, if, if somebody listening is, is like, you know, be honest with yourself. If you, if you are, have made quitting a habit that it's to the point where now you feel like a fucking loser and you don't believe in anything. Like it is as easy as just waking up one day and be like, Oh yeah, I'm just not going to quit. Anymore. I'm going to stop quitting. I'm just, I'm just not going to quit anymore. Even, you know? if, even if I don't like what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just, just going to keep doing stop, it. Stop. Yeah. Mm. That's a cool point. Um, obviously like in life, we always have to do things. Everybody has to do something they don't want to do. Yep. I'm, I'm pretty bad at that. Like I, I really only do what I want to do, but what I do is, is, is hard. And, and actually, so I was, uh, it made me think of in Dan Crenshaw's book, Fortitude, he says, do something hard because it'll make you tougher. Oh yeah. You know? And so like, actually I love this, you know, so, um, the gyms are closed right now. Yep. Um, working out at home for me. Yep. Like it's hard, but now I see that it's like, I was like, Oh, I'm growing. I'm growing. I didn't have what it took mentally to work out at home. And sometimes I'll like keep the door. Like sometimes I'll keep the door closed and I'll keep it hot as shit in there. Yeah. And I'll make myself wear a beanie and, and long clothes. Cause it's just making myself uncomfortable and just make it just making me tougher. I'm right. Like, oh shit. That's cool. So challenge yourself in, in fun ways to grow. Like stop quitting, stop quitting, stop quitting. I, th- those are my stories of quitting. And I, and it's, it's, fucking awful and i'll never do it again it's just not worth it like, it might have been more valuable than the ranger tab is learning the not quit yeah. thing right sure. yeah i mean like but looking back at the, it yeah so but you know if that was that the doesn't less... that doesn't excuse what i did correct because i didn't no, no, i'm like, not saying that. there's there's no fucking retrospect in the moment yep <laughs> you know? you're right and 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 quitting for me shouldn't have been an option but that was a character shift yeah. that came from right. you learning that yeah. is that you were like Mm-hmm. I'm, I don't fucking like this. Yeah. I'm not going to quit again. Yeah. And that's, and that's it. So now it's, you know, it's, and exactly. So now I do like these, like the hard things of my life or something like that, or, you know, like we're, we're the, like doing a tough mutter when I do Murph, when I do these hard things, people are like, Oh, come on, man, you can make it. It's like, motherfucker. I know I'm just going at my own fucking pace. I, I know always, I'm not afraid of doing anything. Yeah. I wasn't afraid to cut my leg off because yep. I was just like, oh, I won't quit. I know I know what it likes. I know what it feels like to quit. So and think I did about, not like that. So think about this. Think about if you didn't go to PRC and quit and learn that lesson, and then you would have just like cruised and then deployed with your unit yeah. and then got shot in the leg having I not just prepared for and that. And you weren't yeah. prepared for getting shot in the leg. It's funny. I know. I know. Like, Crazy, saying, right? I know I'm saying it's funny. <laughs> that's what, you know, every, like I, I said that, like everything that's happened. Yep everything I've done in my life had to happen the way it did for me to be where I am today. And I fucking like, and I, when I say that, I think about Stacy and the boys. Yeah. I'd do it all again. Yep. Every fucking, all the shitty every, stuff, every, all the yep. good stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. Yep, yep, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, you're right. You know? Um, uh, yeah. So it, it's made me tough. Quitting has made me tough. Um, but I don't wish that somebody or actually every every it's not like somebody's just sitting around they've never quit something before right but learn from that and don't and i um don't make quitting a habit bang it out a couple times and be like oh this is fucking shitty uh don't make quitting a habit if you make quitting a habit you're gonna fucking that's gonna be your go-to like for me for a long time um you know i've talked about this before like suicide was my comfort blanket right quitting it can be people's comfort blankets or Mm -hmm. not doing the hard thing, um, you know, whatever, whatever they do to avoid doing the hard thing yeah. is their comfort blanket, throw the comfort blanket away, do, yeah. do hard things. Um, um, and it's just, it's, it really is for me just that mental, like I, I'm never going to quit. Yeah. I'm just, I'm never going to quit. And so nothing matters. And maybe I won't fail. Maybe I won't succeed at something the first time. You know, like whether it's competitions or right. or whatever we're doing, it's yeah, like, it doesn't matter as long as I keep going forward. You know, and, and there's always as long a positive as I don't, in as long failing. As I don't quit, yeah, right. Yeah. But quitting, there's no sure. positive in. Yeah, yeah. There's there's nothing. Yeah, yep. If you fail, so, you at least learn. Mm-hmm. Like like I tried, I failed, it didn't work out, but now I know some yeah. shit. But I wouldn't have learned the lessons that I did as quickly as I did if I didn't pay attention. You know, I was like, why did I quit? Right. What were what what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Why did I quit? 
oh shit so you have to you have to you know like if you're if you're if you're if this is you know resonating with you listening right now if like you're if you've made quitting a habit and a lot of people have Mm -hmm. you know and you feel like a fucking and you can't succeed at something because you're so because you've done nothing but convince yourself that you can't for the last five ten years or what's the point yeah just like sit down and look like why am i failing why why did i fail why did i quit why am i failing all right so here's here's my problem Here's here's my problems. This is these are the three things that are fucking that that are stopping me right now. How do I fix these three things? Okay, let me start implementing, you know, like how do how do I fix how do I how do I overcome these three things? Make make a plan, follow through. Yep. It's like it's that fucking simple. Like yeah. it, it's hard mentally. Everything's hard mentally, you know, but it's it's that simple. It's really that fucking simple. I don't believe you know, that it has to be any more complicated than that. You know, if, um, if, if you, and, and this is, you know, here we talk about fitness and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I think about, you know, that's what people, people who need to lose people who are tw- okay. 20 pounds overweight. It looks disgusting or not disgusting, but it's just, it's, it's 20 pounds overweight. 20 pounds of fat is a lot. I mean, think about, think about like a fucking 20 pound, you know, 20 pounds of fucking meat. That's what's on your body, you right. know? And people feel bad about that, and they fucking, and not only, uh, 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 they they feel bad because they know it's within their control to not do like they're they're quitting on their health and fitness, right? And but they've you know, uh, you know, if you gain five pounds, if you gain three pounds a year for ten years, you know, if and that starts when you're twenty eight. By the time you're thirty eight, you're gonna be thirty pounds overweight. Yeah, and you won't even see it right until you wake up one day. It's just like you know, like when your wife's pregnant. You know, looking back when she's when she's nine months pregnant, if you like, if now you saw a picture of Talia nine months pregnant, you'd be like, "What the oh, fuck?" Yeah. Yeah. But when you were in the shit and you saw yeah. it gradually every day, it was, just, it was just it was just common. It's just yeah. every day. It's like ah, you're not even that big. No, nah, you go great. back and you see like Stacy with the twins. They're like, "God damn, yeah, if, that's fucking huge." You know, but people, you know, it's just that that three becomes six, six becomes nine, nine becomes twelve. Now you're fucking addicted to quitting. You're not addressing the problem. You're not implementing a plan. You feel like a fucking loser. You have no confidence. You have no redemption. And now you have more challenges to try yeah. and overcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're like, yeah. So it's just, it's like, stop, learn, learn All from, the mental learn stuff. from it. And it'll make you tougher. Yeah. If you fucking, but you have to pay attention. You have to know why you quit, why, why you quit or why you're quitting to fucking change course. You yep. Know? You have to know why. And uh, really, it takes digging. It takes digging because, like my my whys, like when you know, I, I I really truly understood why I quit like six years later or something, and it hit me like a light bulb. Because like you know, there's there's layers yeah, of yeah. emotion. Oh and yeah. When you get to the bottom, you're like, oh, you dumbass, you what the fucking fuck? dumbass. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's that's uh that's quitting. Yeah, that's quitting. That's what that's it's funny that quitting has quitting is what has taught me not to quit. <laughs> well, it's the, like you said, it's the taste yeah. of quitting left yeah. in your mouth after you've done it. Mm-hmm. You're like yeah. I don't like this. That's my that's my story. I just I want, you know, it's actually funny. Um I I've I've shared this story you know, because I've shared the story several times before openly on the internet. It's mm-hmm. like for a sh- for a for a you know, I'm, I'm for a person who's kind of like looked at and respected as a soldier, you know, cause most, mostly cause I was wounded, like to, not being a quitter. Right. Yeah. Not being a quitter, <laughs> to, it would, but you know, um, it just sort of not the MO. And I actually, I actually had a friend that I served with, um, uh, he kind of went off the rails for a while. He, he was in that phase of he was so unhappy and his life was shit. Yeah. That he just started attacking people. Yeah. And he like came on my Facebook, my public Facebook. He's like, shut the, f-, you know, I'll try to put out like a motivational message or something like that. He's like, shut the fuck up, Derek. Why don't you tell these people the truth that you're a fucking bitch and you quit PRC like a fucking pussy. And I was just like, no, yeah, I say that. I did. I've said that many times. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of it. Like <laughs> you didn't even fucking go bitch, you know, like, <laughs> you know, but I'm not ashamed of, of telling the story and stuff like that, you know? And I, I, uh, um, seriously, I'm not, I've, and I've, and I've shared it like five or six times before, you know? Yeah. And, uh, uh, 
but it is important for me to always make sure people know I, I'm not, if I'm motivational or inspirational, it's because I've failed and learned and done better. Not because I was, I was not born tough. Right. I was not, I was not raised to be tough. And that was, others like took slow learning in the army, yep. you know? So yeah, those are, um, that's, that's my story for today. Right on. That was my story. Did you like my story? Owen? I did dude. It's kind of, uh, I did. You, you went through PRC. You said, yeah, I so mine was go? I I quit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I quit fast as fuck. I quit on like the second or third day because I started. Uh, I was talking to somebody, and I just and my memory on the whole time frame is kind of weird. My we had someone from our unit who recycled every single time, and I went with the understanding that we were going to be deploying. And then if I passed everything, I'd be able to catch up to my unit. Um, and then when I found out that when you recycle, it can stretch out everything. Like this guy had failed every phase, so he yeah. had been in Ranger School for six months. Yeah, that's what I, that's what that's a lot of my a lot, a lot of my friends that actually went and graduated Ranger School. That that um, the class that I went, I went with a lot of friends, the ones who went on to ranger school, they either, they, you can spend four months there and come home empty handed. Yeah. And, and, you and, can, and you can still spend, not pass. You can spend, yeah. You so can spend I, six months there, get your tab finally. But I think it only takes like two or three months. If you first time go everything at something like that. Yeah. And I, mm -hmm. I was just doing the, like the calendar math of like, all right, let's say I, I was gone this amount of time. Um, and then went right into the deployment and caught like the you, second you half. You knew for sure you were getting deployed. That was oh yeah, did you oh, got, yeah you guys that was you set before we were going. Yeah. And I just didn't realize the the time commitment of if I didn't perform like yeah. at my best. Right. And so it was kind of a yeah. I got there. I had a realization of the time away from from Talia and missing so, deployment. So the 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 thing is is like say that wasn't the case the yeah. deployment thing there would have been something else in place of that thought that's so so looking back do you think you were right or do you think that was i think one i was of, right one of the mental tricks so you, okay, i think which, I was is, right. which is a perfectly good yeah. answer i just like you have to know you know My, it was it was like a, for me the word on the street was we were getting deployed and i did quit but like that had nothing to do with why i quit yeah it was it was there but there was no it didn't have it wasn't my reason. For, like I quit because I wasn't strong enough mentally. Right. You know. <laughs> no, mine was a real kind of clinical decision that yeah. that I didn't discover until it was too late. Yeah. And then I got there and I was like, oh fuck. Yeah. I didn't do the math on the days and and the time away right, yeah. and so I failed the <laughs> I failed the run on purpose. Really. And that's hard to do when you're actually a really good runner because yeah. because they have the pace man. Oh, which like, run did you guys have? Because like the PT test was five miles, but then there's like a two mile run in gear, yeah, full gear. So it was yeah, that, that was a fun one. one. I be, I won that one. <laughs> I didn't. I beat I, like the the dude that beat me on the 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 run, the yeah. five mile. Um, he wasn't as good in boots and fucking full ruck carrying a rifle. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we had a uh, we had a bunch of um. You know how the the so foreign countries send their officers to go through ranger school. Sure. Where They're, did you go to PRC at? What what, uh, what? Benning. Oh, but no shit. Yeah, that's where. That, is that where you were stationed? No, I was stationed in Kentucky. Oh, but they didn't have a PRC. They course didn't have there, anything because so it was you. a Tradoc base. Yeah, okay. And so they sent us down to to yeah. Benning. We did PRC. I did. I. Li I mean, I was literally there for like two days. I did. Yeah. I did the the. I failed the test the first day. They kept me on to do the swim test the next day, and then uh, and then they sent me home. Really? Yeah. Yep. yep. My unit was pissed. But you didn't. But I didn't you give didn't, a shit. Yeah, you didn't LOM. You just fucking. No, failed, uh, no, because uh, I failed the run, I didn't LOM. Yeah. If I would have just quit like yeah. some other way, however the fuck else you do it, they they would have uh they would have LOM'd. But they're like, nope, you can come back after your deployment. It's like, okay. Then I got blown up and didn't go back. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, there was a there was an Italian officer who was also trying to fail the run, and he and I were like running like ri ridiculously slow and he's like are you trying to fail on purpose <laughs> i was like uh-huh are you he's like yeah i fucking didn't want to come here All the, oh wow yeah that's funny that's funny i can't uh i can't relate to that i wanted to be there but i 
Just didn't have what it took. Yeah. I wanted to be the there time. until I realized I did. We were going to war. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's enough for uh, story time today. I do have some questions. Yeah, let's hit a question. Do you want to, you want to bang out a couple questions? Yeah. These are um, totally switching gears here now, guys. 100% that fucking story different direction. Topic is done. Topic is done. Um, we're going to get into fucking food. Uh, I like this. I like this. Maybe maybe we'll just do one question because I'm going to go off on this one a little bit. Okay. Um, uh, somebody asked. Somebody asked us, and this is a common question. Actually, they fucking didn't even say the right word. But so the question is, how do you feel about intermediate fasting? That's not the right word. The right word is intermittent fasting. So do you know what intermittent fasting is? Yeah, I like. Isn't that where you only eat within a certain time yeah, period of the day? Like you got a window from like yep. four to eight p.m. or right. something like eat that. Eat what you want, or whatever the window is. And so here's 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 my main answer. I'm fucking anti anything that tells you what to eat, when to eat it. Besides you, okay. So like, does so do, does intermittent fasting work? Yes. If, if the goal is to lose weight, if the goal, if there's literally one goal and it's to sh- lose fat, does intermittent fasting work? Yes. Does keto work? Yes. Does the carnivore diet work? Yes. But like, more importantly, how do you fucking feel when you're on these diets, physically and mentally? And um, how is your performance? So like, no, I don't. I don't like intermittent fasting. I think it's fucking dumb to just like live by this rule. That, you know, it's like, oh, I can't eat until 3 p.m. What? Why? But what if you're hungry at 11? What if you're, like, cranky because you're low on energy and blood sugar? You can't eat because why? Oh, I'm on a diet. Why are you on a diet? To lose weight and, and get in shape. I was like, well, that's, it's unnecessary. You don't have to feel that way. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's unnecessary. And I'm going to throw, I got to um, have a, and, and so intermittent fasting, like, I do like, I do like waking up in the morning and working out on an an empty stomach. And I do that because that's just like a personal preference. But I think it helps me accomplish goals faster. I I, I just enjoy, I've always enjoyed that, you know, like, and, 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 and like in the army, you wake up and you do PT and I was doing that. I've just, I'm a, I just, since I was 17, I've been waking up and working out in the morning. Yep. And I don't like to, I don't like working out with food in my stomach. So I'm just used to working out on an empty stomach. Right. But, it, um, but and you know, because people, you do people nowadays call that like fasted cardio or something like that, you oh. know, but I, 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 ser- I fuel the fuck out of myself at like 10 PM. Right. I don't wake up hungry. Sometimes I wake up still full. Right. <laughs> you know? Like, but I, but I feel good. It's, it's, it's gone through my stomach down to my poopy parts. Right. You know, <laughs> I wait. <laughs> Yeah. What's the lower what, intestine yeah. called? Oh, it's your poopy the part. Poop, it's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's in my poopy parts. <laughs> you know, so I just I I wake up, I have my caffeine, I throw a chew in, I take my I take my shit, I feel great, I'm ready to go. And I and I do think there's I it makes sense that like fasted cardio, um, um it, it's just a personal preference. But then I have um and I work out again. Right, and, and you I don't stay like to eat again. So, so, but I have a post workout shake, and in that post workout shake, there's probably like 300 calories, 40 grams of protein, 25 to 40 grams of carbs. So, like that is no longer technically fasting. Yeah, you're not fasting. And I have a smoothie, and the smoothie has, you know, uh, milk, strawberry, banana, protein powder, um, and then I hit a second workout. So I'm definitely running low. Right. I'm not, I'm not feeling myself. Um, like I maybe uh, other people think I should, but that's, but I feel best and I perform best, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, I'm and you not, don't feel I'm not, full. I'm not, I don't feel full. Right. I don't feel as strong or as energized as I'd like to, but, um, I couldn't, I couldn't do what I do on a full stomach. And then I have, uh, my post, my second post-workout shake by about 1 PM. Okay. And so I don't technically like eat, eat until three or four. You know, um, which is kind of what intermittent fasting does. Kind of similar. But I'm not fasted. Right. And and most importantly, what I do, I do because that's how I operate best. Mm -hmm. It's it's like that's how I operate best. And 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 um and I choose that and I figure and nobody else is telling me to do this when. This is my choosing. I figured myself out. Um if somebody was like, Hey, do intermittent 
do intermittent fasting and only like, eat between go, seven and eight. Go fuck yourself. I don't like, like your rules. Go fuck yourself, you know? So actually, um, I, I got that. <laughs> and it's the same. My, that, that is my position on all diets, on all diets, like, uh, intermittent fasting, keto, this carnivore thing is the new thing. They all sound fucking dumb to me. They are, they, they, well, they, they do. But the thing is, is like, do they work for uh, weight loss? Yes. But there's other questions that you need to ask. Like, how do I feel? Am I enjoying my life? Am I performing well? And here's a good one. Like the performance thing. I had a friend here yesterday and we worked out together and he's been doing our at home uh, training program. Oh yeah. And, and he's, 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 he's slightly above average fitness level. Right. So he's not, a, he's no slouch, you know, he's a regular guy. Regular job, um, not on, un, not un, not not unhealthy. Works out. Yep. Um, but uh, he fucking tanked yesterday. We did a workout. It was about forty five minutes, and twenty two minutes in, he was just keeled hit a over. Wall. He would. Yep. He hit a wall. Um, and I didn't. Such and, a weird feeling. I found feeling. out after the workout, he's keto. And when he told me that, I was like, "You fucking idiot! Why the fuck are you keto? Huh. Of course, like, why are you? You know." So. Um, uh, uh, he's, he's doing keto for, uh, okay reasons. He's, he's doing it to support his wife, but that, no, no, I can't get behind this man. I can't get behind it. What? Like if, 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 if your goal is to, um, look good, lose fat, be in good shape. Well, how come I can accomplish that? I'm not keto. I'm literally accomplishing your goal right, right now by not, and I'm not, it's not necessary it's not necessary and it's not even like the best fucking option. It's not there's like the best the best option for diet, intermittent fasting, keto, things like that is just like uh f- eating good healthy food, mm-hmm. eating good healthy food, eating real food, exercising, you know, uh drinking water and going to sleep. It's like you don't have to do intermittent fasting to lose fat. You just have to stop eating shit and stop um skipping your workouts that's what you got to do so no i don't i don't but like so many people do intermittent fasting and they do keto and like my uh, I, I you know it's like my friend was doing keto and i just i told him straight up i was like man like but this isn't like it's not your goal like do you feel good right now are you happy was like it makes sense that you fucking tanked on energy and he's like i feel like shit and he was woozy man yeah and he's in good shape you know but he's fucking keto i was like you don't have any blood sugar, whatever the fuck carbs do, whatever, like whatever, yeah. whatever, like this is the, the, and I was like, this is amazing. Cause I'm, I'm seeing firsthand why I am anti keto. Right. This is like, this is, and so, so the thing is, is he's lost weight. And I was like, yes, but you can't perform. You are no longer a man. At 20, so at, at 22 at, minutes, you're yeah, done. You know? And like, like the, our workout was tough. He's not, he's not a, he's, he's a good friend. He's yeah, a, yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's a tough guy, but he's, he's doing keto and it's like, um, he's losing weight, but he's not performing. It doesn't feel good. Right. I was like, what the fuck, dude? Why do you, you know, what if his goals are to do 45 and, minute long workouts? Yeah, and, and I, and I was, um, I was offering him post-workout shakes and this was at the time, like we finished the workout. He, he, he hung in there Yeah. and we did a partner wad, like a, I go, you go type thing. And I didn't, I didn't take any extra reps. Like he, he finished the workout. Right. And it was tough and we did really well. So when I'm, I'm not being like too critical of him here, but he was definitely like, he, he was, he was laying down while I was working. Right. And I was, and I was feeling good. And I was feeling great. I was like getting warmed up, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's just, it's, is it like, it's that's carbs. Literally, yeah. It's literally just because he's keto. Yeah. And, and so that's, that, that proves my point right there. Like, how do you feel about intermittent fasting? I don't like it because it's not necessary. It's not necessary. And you're gonna, you're gonna not enjoy not eating until 4 p.m. What about like, for what people the? who are trying to like, because like you talk about programs a lot for the working out part, right? Like mm-hmm. having a program, your your yeah. your workouts decided for you. I think sometimes people will gravitate towards these diets because the food any part's confusing. Of, any kind of plan will do. Uh, yeah, or yeah. like maybe using it as a stepping stone yeah. to figure yourself so out that's, and that's, then to make adjustments. So when we, when you know, I don't want to get too in depth into that now, but so like for, for when we, whenever we do come to talk about my attack against macro counting, yeah, yeah. when is it good to count? And it's exactly that. But there's, there's, there's counting macros. Right. That's just paying attention yep. to your intake. Yep. And this is something totally different. This right. is a fucking intermittent fasting keto. These are like, 
these are they're crash diets. I, I'll, I, I, they're crash diets, you know, and people do it in a panic. And my friends aren't immune to this. Like right. they are, they are the typical case of overwhelmed, not, quote unquote, nothing is working. Yep. Let me fucking go to extreme measures, and I'm gonna sacrifice how I feel. I'm gonna sacrifice my happiness, things like that. Like there's, um. Uh, I don't want to be harsh on like I don't want to be too harsh on them. They're, like they're good people. I think other people make a much graver mistake than they are. This is like a conscious choice they're right. doing. And and also my friend is kind of like you know I'm I'm also sort of doing this to see if I can. And like we did a you know a couple day fast. Okay. And I part of it was I just wanted to see if I could. Yeah. I mean I question. I don't whether think he I knows the truth of that right. or not, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like some, you know, but, um, it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want you intermittent fasting. I don't like, there's no need. You are going to die someday. Right. Like, and so it's like, it's like the, you know, it's like the, it's the, the deathbed thing. Are you going to sit there on your deathbed and be like, man, I really wish I would have, uh, eaten fewer breakfasts. <laughs> you <know? Nope. laughs> like, you know, I was like, man, I'm fucking dying. And you know, um, <laughs> Not, not like having a rule in place where, and, and here's, the, here's the thing. I'm a, I don't give a, it is what it is. Those rules are, they're impossible to follow long-term unless you're like some sort of devout motherfucker. Right. Um, and here's the funny thing. So my friend is, it is what it is. Um, he's keto. Um, so he wouldn't take a post-workout shake. He wouldn't take a banana, but they were, um, they had plans to drink with friends last night. That throws you out of keto. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And I was like, this, but this is, this is people. This is fitness, you know? And I even said, I said the words. I was like, so you'll cheat. For a I, was beer. Like, I was like, you won't cheat on a banana with a banana, but you'll cheat with alcohol. Yeah. And I was like, and he, I was like, all right. I mean, whatever. Like you do, you like, dude, like I'm, I'm not a perfect person. I make all sorts of mistakes. I, right. I chew a shit ton of tobacco. Who am I to talk about health and things like that? Right. But it's like. You know, if you say, Derek, you're a fucking idiot for chewing tobacco and talking about health, they'd be like, yeah, you're right. You know, so I'm going to tell people when they're being fucking dumb, too. <laughs> 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 and I, so to be like, to be like, I am pro drinking alcohol. I right. drank yesterday. It felt great. Yes. But also I had a fucking post-workout shake. Right. It helps me. So like, don't do intermittent fasting. Um, if you want help with food, um, uh, we, we've had Chad Cole on before. Yeah. And my mom did his program, yep. Habitap.com, Habit App. It's so it's like H A B I T A P dot com. Dot com. Um, and I'm not sure what their social media is offhand, but they'll they'll have like two two or three more challenges, quote mm -hmm. unquote, this year. Um, uh, it's not so much a challenge as it is like an educational course, right? Um, I have no, I I I I can't help you guys directly with food, but I can point you in the right direction. And then so also. Um, the first form app will help you count macros and stuff. And I, um, if, if, if you need help, if you need a program to follow, it's good. It's a good place to get information. Well, to start they, they, and they, while they, you're figuring yourself yeah, out, it's a good start. I don't, I like, I like the habitat approach to food. I wish they would run something year round. Yeah. Maybe we should talk to Chad about we that should. or something. So it's always something like, yeah, hey, can we fucking develop a course where we just give to people? Right. All the time. <laughs> you know? Always available. Cause, yeah. Cause what they did, what they did was really um, cool. And it, my mom lost 12 pounds by eating food. Yeah. Just the food, mm -hmm. just the eating portion. And there's rules, but the rule is like, don't have a fucking cookie. Right. And pay attention to your ingredients. Oh, that does this have this X amount? Of, like, so my mom learned how much sugars are in some everyday foods. And she was like, holy fuck, you know? So, yeah. Do you Ooh. think that, do you think the counting macros part helps with, cause like usually I'm trying to figure out how I want to ask the question. If people are starting to learn about food, yeah, they're learning what's in certain. Yeah, foods. no, that's per so like yeah, so like I counted macros for a long. I counted macros in two thousand five. Right, I mean, like you know, if if it fits your macros, probably start like it. It probably started getting traction in like twenty sixteen. Okay, you know, so I was counting. I was doing this in the past. And right. So what I so the the benefit is I did learn what's in food. Like I basically know what's in a banana. I basically know. Um, what's it, I, I know these, I know the right. macros, you know? Yep. Um, but, uh, so yeah, it's good. It's good to learn that, but people, 
don't pay attention to the right things when they're doing that. They're just a slave to the numbers. Right. They're just yep, a slave to the numbers. And there's no, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like going to college. You can go to college and graduate and not learn a goddamn thing and just come out of it a fucking dumb piece of shit. Right. But you have your degree. It's the same thing. You know, it's like, what do you pay? What like, and I, and I see it cause I, cause I see it and I'm a part of some things that teach people to count macros and I see them start over 10 times a year because they're not doing something fucking sustainable. Right. You know, my diet is my, my diet is fucking human proof because I created my diet based right. on how I, what I enjoy, um, what works for me and things like, like it's, it's the perfect, my diet is the perfect diet because it's exactly how I can run optimally. Yeah. I like that. You said you, your first reason is what I enjoy. Yeah. Like you based if it you, off of what you yeah, enjoy so nobody, and then what I works for I would enjoy you. intermittent fasting. And so I would fucking, I would fail. Yeah. And or like, could I, could I, if I, no, there's no reason I would ever have to do intermittent fasting nope. unless I'm, you know, a prisoner somewhere or something right. like that. You know, it's unnecessary. Um, and, 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 and it makes sense that other people don't enjoy it either. You know, because it's like you're sitting there at 1127 and you're like, I am fucking starving. I can't even focus on work yeah. because I'm fucking starving. And I can't, I can't think about f- anything until I get some food in, but I can't eat food because I'm a fucking fat motherfucker that for four has hours. to do intermittent fasting. What a, what a, of course, you, of course. And you, it sounds like it's um, going to make you unhappy. And if you're unhappy, you're going to fail. And it's that simple. Like and you're, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're going to fail. That's it, you know. So, um, uh, and that's and that's, you know, so keto like intermittent intermittent fasting, keto. Let's say it works for like five percent of people. Like they enjoy. Like there's people who enjoy it. Oh, there's people like who love it. Literally enjoy it. Yep. And if it's a true enjoyment, it's a match. Yeah, but like, but but ninety five percent of people don't. And you know, like I don't even know how many friends that I have who have done keto for a month. And so they defend it and they're like, I lost fucking 46 pounds on keto. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but that was a year ago and you're fat again. So what the fuck? <laughs> well, I'll just go back on keto. Obvi- Why? It didn't work the first time. It's not sustainable for the rest of your life. Right. It's just unnecessary. We, we, uh, uh, you said that you said long con the other day. Yeah. And like, that's my thing. When it comes to your health and fitness, play the long con. Yep. You know, it's like, oh, it's okay. So you're, so you got 50 pounds to lose. Don't put an expert, like just start working every day. Yeah. Like just like, just there's no, you're going to get there eventually. If you like eat, eat, eat good food, exercise, drink water and sleep. You're going to get there. It doesn't have like, yep. It, it's like if you keep moving forward every day, you're going to get there. You will get there, but um, it's not going to happen it, and on keto. It'll happen fast, but it's not going to, you're not, it's, it's not going to stick and you're not going to enjoy yourself. Fuck that. So that's my answer. That's my answer. How do you feel about intermediate fasting? Intermediate fasting. Yeah. It's not intermittent, advanced. It's intermittent fasting. And I just I just don't think I would never I would never suggest it to somebody because I don't think it would make them happy. And it wouldn't work in the long run anyways. So that's my answer. There you go. That's my answer. Um I think I think uh I think that could do it for that was a, yeah, that's good to go. Um, anyways, uh, we're going to get this email set up so that you guys can ask us. Yes. I have a really good name, yep. but I don't want to drop it yet. Like no, I, I someone feel, will buy that feel, shit and try and sell it to really us. I feel really good about the email name for this, you know? <laughs> I'll yeah. show you the fucking email. Yeah. Get right. out of here. Yeah. Fucking bastards. So that's going to do it for us this week here on Savage Saturdays on the Drinking Bros podcast. Thanks for joining us. See you uh, next week. We love you guys. Bye. <laughs>